With 2023 finally upon us, what better way to get excited about Crossout than to share with you 23 tips and tricks for the wasteland. So let's get into it. Let's start with some tips from the settings menu. In case you didn't know, there have been a lot of recent updates to the game, and one of them involves the new camera settings. Now, by default, the camera is zoomed in much closer to your vehicle, and personally, I think this is not a good look. So I recommend moving it back as far as you can. To do this, just go to the general settings tab and move this slider all the way to the right and make sure to apply the change. While we're on the topic of camera settings, you may have noticed that by default, your view is set to an animated or floating camera. And some of you are probably wondering what that really means. Well, here's an example. With this setting turned on, you'll notice that when your vehicle moves forward, the camera will slowly zoom out. But if you happen to stop abruptly, your camera acts like it's attached to a rubber band and will slingshot itself forward and backward with a delayed response. Now here's the same view with the floating camera turned off. Much better, wouldn't you say? To fix this issue, just uncheck this box and hit apply. Here's one last tip from the settings menu. Have you ever been cruising through the wasteland, taking down baddies, when all of a sudden you get hit with this deafening sound? Well, that's called the stun effect. And if you find it to be a bit too jarring, you can turn it off. It's actually under the audio settings and it's located right here. Just uncheck this box, hit apply, and you're good to go. Coupons used to be a resource in Crossout that allowed you to level up your co-drivers but now they've been replaced by intelligence. In order for you to get access to this intelligence, you will first need to increase the engineer's faction to level 30. After this, you'll now see that intelligence is an added resource that you can earn through missions. Of course, there are limits to the amounts you can earn, so make sure to hover over the icon to read up on those details. Tip number five. When it comes to daily challenges, there are three weapon types that you should keep on hand. Machine guns, shotguns, and cannons. The weapon types will rotate daily, but it will always be one of these three. To find out exactly what items qualify, just hover over that challenge and a list of approved parts will be displayed. As of the supercharged update that came out in October of 2022, you now have the option in Crossout to subscribe to your friend's blueprints. Anytime they upload a new blueprint to the exhibition, you will get notified and be able to check out their latest creation. There are two ways to access these blueprints, and the first way is through the notification center here. The second way to access subscriptions is by going to your friends list, right click on the player you want, and go to their profile. Here you will see the same option to subscribe or to view their blueprints. Tip number seven. When browsing the exhibition itself, you might be tempted to download a build and immediately go into battle with it. But I must warn you, not all builds are created with equal care. So my suggestion is to examine a build before you use it. Doing so will get you more familiar with the building process and it will help you to eliminate any flaws the build might have. Here's another building tip for you. When mounting parts used to protect your weapons, it's always a good idea to check your shooting clearance in the test area. If not done properly, you could be lowering your weapon's effectiveness, which means your build is actually working against you. Another safeguard you can implement to ensure you have a good build is to duplicate your vehicle. You can do this by ensuring that this box is checked in the settings menu. Then when you drive out into the test area, you can shoot your build to see how it holds up against taking damage. Tip number 10. When browsing the tech tree looking for a part that you don't have, one thing to remember while you're examining its parameters is to turn on weld points. This is a good idea for a couple of reasons. First, it lets you see what the part's limitations are when planning your build, and secondly, it helps you understand its size parameters and other features such as where power nodes are located. To access this view, you press F key on PC or left on the D-pad for console players. Tip number 11. Did you know you can preview paints before you buy them? It's true. Just find the paint you're looking for on the market 
and choose parameters. Then you will see your current build with a new coat of paint. It just may help you decide if that color really suits you or not. Here's some advice with a little more depth to it. Crossout now has clear indicators of a cabin's health that can be visually observed and there are five stages. At the first stage, your vehicle is healthy and fully intact. There's no visible smoke and your cabin's health is between 100 to 61%. During the second stage, your vehicle is considered weakened and you will notice light smoke rising from the cabin. The vehicle's health at this stage is between 60 to 41%. At the third stage, your vehicle is now damaged. A noticeable amount of smoke rises from the cabin and its health ranges from 40 to 26%. When your vehicle reaches the fourth stage, it is now considered in critical condition. Fire billows from your cabin and its health is below 25% of its original durability. And the last stage is pretty obvious. Total and complete <laughs> annihilation. <laughs> The cool part is that your destroyed vehicle will remain as an obstacle during the match, so you might still be able to impact the game even after you get destroyed. Speaking of a destroyed vehicle, self-destructing in Crossout also has a new animation. Once activated, you will see a plume of smoke along with sparks and flames coming from your cabin. Along with this is an audible beeping that other players within your radius can hear. So when you see this animation or hear that sound, make sure to keep your distance. In case you missed it, your vehicle now comes with a scope automatically installed. It has a range of 1.8 to up to 2.8 times the zoom, which is pretty decent considering it's free. On PC, you press the shift key to activate it. And on console, it should be left on the d-pad also just so you know under the interface tab you have several options on how the scope is activated and used so check that out if you're interested another new feature of crossout are the ui indicators for various events some of these notifications include immobilizing an opponent disarming them and hitting explosive modules these indicators can be very helpful especially when you're shooting at long range so keep an eye out for them and see what other ones you can find. Here's a new feature that I don't see being used very often, but I think it should. It's based off the old callout system, but now you can actually mark an enemy and they will stay marked even if they're behind buildings. The cool part is that each player on your team can mark a separate enemy. So you can have multiple markers running at the same time. And just so you know, if an enemy uses a cloaking module, it will remove the marker that was placed on them. So you would have to mark them again if you still want to keep track of them. Tip number 17. Capping a base during missions now has a countdown timer, which is a great addition to the game. And in case you were wondering, the time it takes to cap a base varies depending on several factors. During assault and encounter missions, capping a base by yourself alone will take 1 minute 30 seconds. That's 30 seconds per section. And for domination mode, it will take you 2 minutes one minute for each base. Speaking of base capturing, here's a tip for you when you're playing the assault game mode. Unless you have the majority of your team at the enemy base, I recommend only capturing one section, which like I mentioned before will only take you 30 seconds and then return to battle. You only need one capped section to win even if there are more enemies remaining when the time is up. Doing this will not only increase your odds of winning, but your rewards will increase for getting a higher score and your teammates will appreciate the support. One tip that I think is underrated when playing PvP missions is to stay moving. With artillery weapons being a more regular feature in the game, even when you think no one else can see you, you're probably being watched. And a sitting duck is way easier to target than a flying turkey. Cover fire and cross out is a real thing and you should definitely use it, especially when you have weapons with unlimited ammo. As you can see, cover fire will often make your opponents rethink their plan of attack, which can give you the advantage in many situations. When it comes to raids, the AI can be challenging at times. 
So one way to take down enemies faster is to aim for explosive modules which are conveniently colored red. Each faction has different vehicle designs, which means explosive parts won't all be in the same place. But as you get familiar with each faction, you'll find it's much easier to take them down by focusing your fire in these areas. Currently in Crossout, there are eight different raid modes, and there's one in particular that I recommend avoiding if possible, and that is Steel Cradle. I've played all of the game modes many times over, and Steel Cradle consistently offers less rewards compared to the time it takes to complete it. Additionally, the boss fights are significantly more challenging as you move up in difficulty, so I'd say pass on this mode if possible. And finally, tip number 23. Crossout battles can be pretty intense sometimes, but in the end, this game is still a game, and it's meant to be enjoyed. So if the opposing team has a great victory, or your team coordinates well, let them know in the comments with a simple GG or well played. This can go a long way in maintaining a healthy community of players. And that my friends will wrap up 23 tips and tricks for Crossout. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone new to Crossout. Other than that, I'll see you here next time on Crossout Basics.